In order to perform controlled experiments in the lab, we need to know the amount, so the number of moles, of each substance we are using. However, counting the number of molecules or atoms we use is just not possible. We can determine the mass using a balance. Therefore, there must be a relationship between the amount in moles and the mass of a substance. So don't forget, Avogadro's number is just a count, right? It's a very large number, but it's a count. So, an atom is a very small entity. Its mass is measured in atomic mass units. Bless you. Atomic mass units. We can write AMU for short, but it's unit. is a U. It's a U, the letter U. One atom of carbon-12 has a mass of 12.00 units. One mole of carbon-12 has a mass of 12.00 grams. So a mole of carbon-12, so 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon-12 has a mass of 12 grams. So one mole of an element has a mass in grams with the same numerical value as the mass of one atoms in U's. However, these represent very different number of carbon atoms, right? Very different quantities. We're talking about 6 times 10 to the 23 atoms versus one atom. So the mass of one mole of a substance is called the molar mass. The molar mass, the mass of one mole. Its symbol is a capital M and the units are grams per mole. Molar mass of a compound is the sum of the molar masses of each element in the compound. So we're going to calculate a couple of molar masses. So, what is the mass of hydrogen? 1.01. In water, there are two of them. And water is? Sorry, oxygen is? 16.00. So the molar mass of water is 18.02 grams per mole. 18.02 grams per mole. What would be the mass of one molecule of water? What would be the mass of one molecule? One molecule of water has a mass of 18.02 U. 18.02 grams is for 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So we can measure grams in the lab. So this is useful. Okay, carbon dioxide. What's the mass of carbon? 
what's the mass of oxygen? 16 times 2 is 32 for a total of 44.01 grams per mole. Okay, you guys do sodium chloride. What's the mass of sodium? 22.99 and chlorine. So what's our molar mass? 3.544. Thank you. Okay. You don't have to put grams per mole on all your lines, but you do have to put grams per mole in your final answer. Okay? So if I asked you to calculate the molar mass of something, two marks. Did you add it up correctly? Did you put the units in? Now, these are pretty straightforward. There's only a couple of elements, but when you get to something like glucose, which is C6H12O6, it's a little more complicated. But I've made it a little bit easier for you. Most of the molar masses in your periodic table have two decimal places. So all of your molar masses should have two decimal places. Okay. In moles, the mass and the molar mass are related to each other. Big M is molar mass. Little n is moles. Small m is mass. So molar mass has the units grams per mole. Moles is mol and mass is grams. So they're related by this formula. Small n is me equal to small m divided by big M. Magic triangles. One thing you're going to have to use at some point are some conversion factors. There's a thousand milligrams in one gram, and there's a thousand kilogram, sorry, there's a thousand grams in one kilogram. We can calculate the molar mass of sucrose. 12 times 12.01. two. Twenty two times 1.01. Twenty two point twenty two. Eleven oxygens is a hundred and seventy six. So altogether, three hundred and forty two point three four grams per mole. Okay, so there you go. Molar mass already. So small n is going to be 40 grams divided by 342.34 grams per mole.
okay? Because there's only three sig figs, we're dropping our eight, rounding up. We have a mass of 40 grams. We've calculated the molar mass. three hundred and forty two point three four grams per mole. That is a ratio. So we're looking for mole. Do either one of those numbers up there have moles in it? Yeah, there's one. It has to be on the top. You want the unit for your final answer to be on the top. So we have to flip this over. So one mole over 342.34 grams. Notice I didn't change any of the numbers. I just inverted it. Now moles are on top. Last Friday I told you the number comes next is whatever unit is on the bottom. On the bottom, the unit is grams. So our next item has to have grams in it. So 40 grams. So now grams cancel. You multiply what's on top, you divide by what's on bottom. So again, it's 40 divided by 342.34. I can see that I can only have three sig figs. There you go. You didn't have to remember a formula. Because we want millimoles to cancel. So really, we've got 4 times 10 to the negative 3 moles. So mass will be equal to N times big M. Our moles are going to cancel. We're going to be left with grams. Zero point seven two zero seven two grams. Oh, sorry, that was four point zero moles. Four point zero moles. So our final answer can only have two sig figs. So zero point seven two grams of glucose. So you wouldn't have to keep writing these out because they're already given in the question. I'm just writing them out here so you can see them. All right. What are we trying to find in this question? Grams. So we need mass. Which one of these three values has mass in it? The 180.18. So this one's going to go first. Because we want grams in our final answer, the grams goes on top. So this second item is gone. Now, do we have a value of that there that has mole in it? MOL. The last one. But mole is on the bottom. It has to be on the top in the next one because we want it to cancel with this. So we're going to invert it. One mole over a thousand millimoles. So now moles have canceled. I don't have grams all by itself. 
right now I've got grams per millimole. I want to get rid of millimole. We've got another number and it contains millimole. Now, the only units we have in our final answer are grams. So in your calculator, if you typed in 180.18 times 4, so that takes care of the top, divide by whatever's on the bottom, so divide by a thousand. Okay, what number do you get? Same number. But we didn't have to use any formulas. This is good for people who don't like to memorize things, which is frankly very useful.